वेलकम एवरीबडी टू शुभ्रा रंजन आई ए एस एज ऑल ऑफ यू नो साइंस एंड टेक प्लेस अ वेरी क्रूशियल रोल इन योर सिविल सर्विस प्रिपरेशन एदर इट इज फॉर प्रिलिम्स और मेन्स साइंस एंड टेक प्लेस अ ह्यूज रोल सो ह्यर राइट नाउ वी हैव विथ अस फैकल्टी मेम्बर रितेश सर uh he's the expert and he has got so many years of experience and he's the best in science and tech so we would like to hear from himself about the statistics of science and tech how many questions have been asked in the past so sir uh, the importance of science and tech is so much in upsc prelims and mains so how many questions have come in the past and in future how many questions can come can you please tell so science and technology is there in prelims as well as in main examination and as far as prelims examination is concerned that every year invariably you will find 12 to 15 questions coming from science and technology part so out of 100 if you get 12 to 15 question coming from science and technology it's a sizable area moreover we are living in a scientific age we are living in a digital age and importance of science and technology is increasing day by day that is why this is also reflecting in upsc prelims examination on for that matter any examination of india you see that the percentage of question from science and technology is increasing right in main examination it is in paper 3 and in paper 3 they ask around 2 to 3 question sometime 4 question from science and technology right but then there are some linkages of science and technology with some other area of the main examination let's say from uh environment section you will find few questions which are coming linked with science and technology in paper 3 itself then in paper 1 also you will find that geography is there and in geography some question can be linked with science and technology like uh, uh gps or let's say land information system or let's say satellite navigation system remote sensing so these area can be linked with science and technology in paper 2 also there are certain section of polity where plans and policy and laws and bills and acts are there and there are certain acts and bills which are related to science and technology let's say surrogation regulation regulation act uh, or let's say dna technology regulation bill so all these things will make up like science and technology and integration with the other part of the gs right so that is how it is going on right now so science and tech is invariable and inevitable in almost all the subjects Yes, yes, it's there. Its linkages are there with every subject. Every subject. Yeah. Sir, uh, what about students who do not have any background of science and technology? Say, for example, BA students or BCom students, they do not have much exposure to science, so they have only read till tenth class, and they that too it was long back. Mm -hmm. They forgot. They must have forgotten whatever they have learned. So, how should they start? Okay, if that's a very valid question, that if somebody is not from science background, then what should be the way out for them to get into science and technology so first of all you need to understand one thing that this is upsc civil services examination this is not an examination for scientist or drdo or isro or barc so they are basically asking for you know general understanding of science and technology and that general understanding of science would come up from ncert books so 6th to 10th ncert book anybody can go and revise it because everybody has done till 10th class and there are various courses available also for ncert and the basic classes i am sure that it's there on a subra ranjan is2 and there you can get this ncert course and you can you know brush up the entire thing moreover once you have done with the basic sciences then leave it to us because once you are there in a classroom then we'll take care of everything whenever we are going to discuss about any technology then we also discuss the associated scientific concept of it so first we clear the scientific concept then we go with the technology and it's all about having the general approach the impact of science and technology on our life and different aspect of the different area and uh, economy society and the other part of the country that is what it is so that's a very good idea that you gave sir because once they uh, brush up their ncert books through yes. ncert courses which is already available in sugar and then probably they can catch up faster sir and also i have seen uh, that a uh, lot of questions came from your class notes so how did you manage that and what sort of homework do you do to bring that to the students 
No, that's basically that's my job. Uh, I have been teaching science and technology from last 17 years. So it's like it, it's in my daily life that I has to go with the daily news and all the current affairs which is going on. So it's a kind of you know it's not a a kind of uh, effort that I have to put in. It's it's in my lifestyle now that everything which is important from science and technology part of I mean point of view that will come across. There are different I mean I read some magazines, some newspaper. There are some huge channels that I follow or online and then we get all the things done in a digital way and then I deliver and into the classroom. Sir, how do you manage time with all this? Because you have to get updated yourself and you have a, such a busy routine taking classes and all. How do you manage time? Yes, I mean schedule is busy because every day at least six to eight hours in the I'm in the classroom only. But like I told you that we are living in a digital age. So this digital thing create uh, a, a lot many good avenues where you can get all the things updated. You don't need pen and paper, like obviously the student need pen and paper. But now as a teacher, I don't, uh, I mean, always go with the pen and paper. So when I'm uh, traveling back to my home or coming from my home to uh, institute, so mm, mobile is there, tab is there. I keep on, you know, updating things digitally on that. And then once in a week, I sit down and I write it onto the paper and that is how it goes on. So that is how it is. Sir, what sort of books would you suggest? Would you suggest any books for students? Uh, unfortunately, science and technology doesn't have any book. I mean, in the market, you will get only guides, not books. And I would always say, I mean, I'll always say to the student that you should not follow guide at the very first place. Guides are quick fix, right? Guides are not something that will take you to the long way in this preparation. Rather, if you want to start with, go with the NCRT books, clear your basic reading and then rely on to the newspaper and magazine for all new development in current technology which is going on. Unfortunately, there is no book, but yes, you can rely on to the class notes. So teacher is dictating and giving you class notes and then you can rely on that, you can get it done. Sir, in your class there are so many students and you take so many batches, but then I heard that you will be taking one-on sessions, mentorship with students, one-on-one -on -one personal interaction with students. How do you do that? Sir? That's again a part of this profession because once you teach in a classroom, then classroom is full of students. There are hundreds and 200, 300, 400, 500 students may be there, right? But then as a teacher, I'm always open to meet student after the class. So after every class, I stay back. I get back into the cabin. I stay there for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And I really wait for the student to come and ask question. And uh, many of them, they come and they put their query in front of me. Now, again, we are in a digital age. Mm -hmm. So we can connect with the student through Zoom and some online students reach out to us uh, on my social media, sometime on a WhatsApp or Instagram and Facebook. And if I find that query is worth you know, replying, mm -hmm. I do reply all of them. Right. Yeah. So you give that access to students to approach? Yes, yes. I mean, uh, it's already on a public platform so it's everybody can get that yes sir and sir uh, most students ask me uh, or they, they have this doubt uh, how much of statistics should they remember because numbers are many and you know so many microns so many hertz the, the numbers are too many in science mm. so how would you suggest them my take is very simple. If you are preparing for UPC examination, digits are not important. Numbers, numericals are not important. What is important is concept. Digits, numericals and numbers are just a mean, just a way to get to the concept. So dry facts you cannot memorize and remember it for a long time, right? All you need to do that there are certain facts and these facts should not be pinpointedly memorized. It's just, you know, vaguely you can have an idea and you can connect it with the concept in one un, I mean one line if you want to ask me whether these digits and data is important or not <clears throat> then I would say it's not important mm -hmm. what is important is concept and any digit and data that is linked with the concept that will automatically be there with you so don't go with the dry facts go with the concept that is important sir I have seen one of your videos where the video has gone viral. Your mock interview, you were taking mock interview for one of the uh, successful candidate. 
and it has gone viral all over it was there in youtube and insta facebook yes. it is all over so do you also give personality training to students uh i do participate in mock interview now now nowadays social media is flooded with mock interview so i do participate in mock interview i have participated in past and present also and in my view people student they approach to me uh, for personality development but i have another take on personality development you know personality get developed once you achieve the success like if the student clear prelims the personality is 10 times more developed because you get the confidence once you clear main examination your personality is again 10 times more developed because now you have gone more confidence and by the time you reach to the interview you are already developed what we do we do a little bit of fine tuning little bit of practice so we are mean by which you can practice upon us because we are sitting as a mock interview panelist and so that you can go and perform well into the real interview so yes i am open for that if anybody comes and asking for the mock interview tips and then uh, personality development tips i'm open for that i do i do help student in all the possible way that it could be whatever it takes yes yes so that's how it is going to be a goodie and freebie for all the students of ritesh sir who are at with subra ranjan uh, and sir what are your hobbies uh, my hobby yes sir. <laughs> okay my hobby is i like traveling and uh, i also like you know i am into photography photography so i do uh, little bit of wildlife photography and uh, travel photography so whenever i get time i just leave delhi i roam around do you get time sir uh, yeah i manage some time <laughs> i do need to manage it so fortunately so, yes yes so that is what my hobby is sir in your class there are so many students who are successful through your class so many student passed out and they made it to the rank so are you in touch with the students and how do you feel about it when they attribute the success to you um are they in touch with you sir now i have different take on this i feel happy to be in touch with the student who are aspiring who are going to you know appear appear the examination i feel more happy with them right and then the student who have got through i mean they have already made it to the ranks mm. then there are two types of students i mean one who get busy with their schedule because once you become ias and ips officer you don't have time actually yeah, right exactly. and and that is how it should be i mean if they are serving the nation and having no time it's a very good sign right yes. and few of them they reach try to reach back to me like they feel like being in touch with me i respect them too and that i reciprocate them but then uh, i am a little bit you know reserved and not so proactive in maintaining the connection with all the student who have got selected so i am happy with the sparring one who are going to appear in the examination that's uh, very good things sir what about current affairs how do students have to update themselves when it comes to science and tech yeah science and current affairs is a very important part of current affairs and current affairs is indicative that what kind of topics you should focus on so current affairs can be done in two ways one is newspaper so make an habit of reading newspaper on a daily basis and try to scan that what are going on in terms of technology in terms of any other area of the gs where the current affairs is linked with that is a daily habit another is try to get one magazine one career magazine monthly magazine which is there in a the market many ma magazines are there any magazines of your choice where you feel comfortable you can go with that so one newspaper one magazine that will be sufficient and then you should also follow one or two current affair channels and something like that just one or two not all right so that you can manage your time well otherwise you know youtube and social media and all kind of you know input that is coming in that takes a lot of time so we wise with what you select there is nothing no replacement of reading right so reading newspaper reading magazine is very important watching video is something that is you know it should be done in a leisurely way leisurely yeah uh, sir now uh, there is a new batch uh, coming up from shubhra ranjan so april 2nd there is a batch and again later on there is there are going to be few new batches for general studies so how do you welcome the students to shubhra ranjan i mean yeah, i would just tell you that uh, at shubhra ranjan is we have a very good team 
dedicated for each and every area of the general studies and i would request that everybody who is into serious preparation they should visit they should come and attend few classes at least and then explore talk to the faculty try to come reach out to us meet us talk to us and at the end of the day it's uh, what is matter is serious preparation in a serious way which can result which can give some positive result in the life of the student and obviously we all will be happy with that too right w one last question sir yes. what's your experience uh, how do you feel working in shubhra ranjan and what's your connection uh, with the institute and a few words about ma'am also uh obviously uh, i have been in touch with uh, shubhra ranjan ma'am since quite a long time and whenever i met ma'am then ma'am was like uh, that please i mean let's make a team and you come and uh, take few classes i used to take uh, quality enrichment program like uh, last year also i took uh, three four classes so it's like you know it's like a stars which align together and then we all come together to work upon and it's such a nice experience because this institute is dedicated for quality education that is already evident because uh, the kind of uh, ranks that rank and the kind of you know delivery that shubhra ranjan ma'am is commanding right now it's unparalleled and uh, she always wanted to create a very good bunch of people who can take care of gs and deliver the same way that she is delivering in the i mean uh, this psir batches so that is how the things is going on so i'm no, very happy no compromise on the quality yeah i don't think that any compromise on quality is that and i'm very much sure that uh, in gs also the things will be repeated in the same way like ma'am has created a kind of a standard and we are going to meet that yeah with that note thank you so much sir for your time Thank and uh, welcome uh, i also welcome all the students who are going to join shubhra ranjan very soon so if you have any queries any doubts always feel free to approach ritesh sir sir is always available for any concern for any doubt uh, he is always there for the students so thank you once again sir for your time and see you all thank you thank you thanks a lot